What can you say about a group of men who created music that transcends time, that connects one generation with the next? You can say that they were keen observers of life, who made their stories feel like our own. Something about them felt familiar. They looked like us. They were who we wanted to be. So how did a country boy from Texas and a suburban kid from Detroit find each other at the dawn of their musical journeys? They went to Mecca. The Troubadour was the center of our musical universe and the place I met Glenn Fry, Don Henley, and a lot of other musicians looking for their next song, their next paycheck, or their next meal. I was putting together a touring band and hired Glenn, a great guitar player with an exquisite vocal range. And Don was an ideal drummer for a singer like me. He played simply, understood traditional music, and was a brilliant vocalist. On the road, Glenn and Don played and wrote music all night and made a fateful decision to form their own band. The 70s arrived with intensity, and so did the Eagles. Their music was impeccable. Every note and lyric were considered, and every song mattered. When this epic seven-minute single reached number one, the Eagles had come of age. This song of profound resonance would become an iconic part of our musical landscape for the next 40 years. Joe Walsh confused the Eagles with unrestrained rock and roll. Timothy B. Schmidt added a soaring vocal range that elevated every harmony. What's it like to be an eagle now? It's just part of my life. We managed to represent that period of time in the 70s, Southern California which was very artistically creative. I hope that's remembered like the Roaring Twenties are. We wanted longevity. It wasn't a hobby for us. It wasn't a game. It wasn't a pleasant diversion. It was a, a life. It was a calling. It was a career. We set out to become a band for our time. But sometimes if you do a good enough job, you become a band for all time. To my brothers, the Eagles, forever may you fly. <laughs>